Is it just me or do a lot of anime fans just not like small children? If they're married, they make faces at the idea of having kids. And if they're not married, then they make faces at young children. Little kids are loud and messy and, well, annoying. These fans may have a problem with Mamoru Hosoda's 2018 film, Mirai. Fortunately, Mirai is unquestionably a beautiful film. If nothing else, you can sit back and watch carefully crafted animation in a carefully crafted setting that's drawn more or less flawlessly. Also, as usual for Hosoda's films, Mirai is set in the modern world but with a fun fantasy twist. On the other hand, if you don't like fantasy, do note that the fantasy here is a bit more than it seems. Anything more than that would be a spoiler though, and we can't have that. That said, and I'm sorry to break this to you if you don't like small kids, this is a movie about a small kid, Kuhn, the only child of a busy modern couple. He lives a normal toddler's life until his mother brings home his new baby sister. Now nearing school age, Kuhn grows increasingly frustrated with how his world is changing and starts to act out. It's at this point that typical strange things start happening, but let's get back to Kuhn for a moment. This is the tough thing for folks who don't like small kids. Kuhn acts very naturally for a child his age. It's not that he's spoiled, and he doesn't explicitly resent his sister. He's just used to the way things used to be, and wants things to continue that way. We all feel that way at times, we just have the maturity to deal with it, and Kuhn doesn't yet. This is actually one of the primary themes that the film develops, seeing a situation from someone else's perspective. This is not simply escapist fantasy. So why focus on the emotional life of a little kid? Because the film actually uses Kuhn's reactions to explore the dynamics of the rest of his family and how they are all connected. As a result, this can be a slow movie at times, as we watch a situation develop at home, Kuhn's reaction, and then we see how his flights of fantasy help him understand and appreciate that situation and the people around him. This is a domestic film, and a family film in almost every sense, which means it lacks the urgency of, say, Summer Wars, which just builds tension on top of tension, or the curiosity of The Girl Who Left Through Time, which keeps exploring its concept in delightful ways. Mirai offsets this mundane perspective with lush backgrounds and very carefully drawn characters. While the character designs by Yoshiyuki Satomoto are typically crisp and distinctive, much attention has been paid here to draw them both consistently and with personality. See, a huge staff of animators drew this film, as with any animated film, which means every character was drawn by different people at different times in production. Animation studios typically address this in a few different ways. One, each character gets a distinct style of motion, and it's typically assigned to only a few animators, that's the Disney model. Two, each animator draws his or her scene in a different style. Or three, all the characters both look and move the same. You've probably seen the latter in cheap TV animation. Four characters will run alongside each other and they'll all move exactly alike. Instead, Mirai's characters are always recognizably themselves. Kuhn's father has a somewhat nervous, distracted energy but never spins into excess. Kuhn's mother is even keeled to a fault, which the film explores in surprising ways. And Kuhn himself is pretty much everything you'd expect in a four-year-old. Curious, energetic, and mercurial. The film also features Hasoda's typical art style, favoring pastel colors and relatively muted hues instead of bright primary tones. I found no problems at all with the voice acting, which I listened to in Japanese. Mirai's voice actress in particular stands out. We feel like we know Mirai, despite how little she's in the film, but any more on that and we'd be in spoiler territory. Yuko's voice acting eh, just got a little bit too shrill at times for my tastes, so I'm looking forward to hearing Crispin Freeman's performance, as well as the rest of the English cast. Like most of Hasoda's films, Mirai lies slightly outside of typical anime fare. There are no apocalypses, no epic destinies, no fan service, no magical girls. But it's also not a straight domestic drama. Hosoda brings a little magic to this family, and that makes this film a treat. As long as you can stand watching the antics of a little kid.